So friends, this is George Ann Reynolds, and George Ann is responsible for pretty much the candlelight vigil. You're legendary. Uh, you're the you're the legend that a lot of people don't know about. So well, I want to let people know about you. So tell us about the first candlelight. That would have been seventy eight, right? Nineteen seven no seventy eight was there was a strike. Okay. And there was a curfew in Memphis, and the police and the fire department were on strike. You had to be off the streets by like 7 o'clock. It was very early because we thought we were going to starve to death. Because all the restaurants were closed, everything. You could only be on the streets if you were traveling, passing through. So we carried a suitcase in our trunk. Eddie Poole, the Grayson Fan Club president, had a convention out at Circle G. So the night of the 15th, 16th, we s slept on the floor out there watching Elvis movies because we couldn't come back to town. In the house? In the pink barn. Oh, in the big pink building. But they had the house all fixed up. And Ed Parker was there, Billy Smith, Marty Lacker, Lowell Hayes. A lot of people were there just to talk about Elvis. And you had a tour of the ranch and all this, and then movies and sock hop and it was a lot of fun. So the peak building was nice at that at that time. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so was the house. Yeah. They had it furnished and everything. You could walk through it supposedly like when Elvis was there. Wow. So you weren't able to do the vigil no. in seventy eight. So no. let's go to seventy nine and tell us about that. We chartered a bus from Austin and we came up here and we stayed at the old Days Inn on Brooks Road. So we had the bus up here, and we were meandering around, walking, and the old hickory log and all that. And um, it's, you know, August 15th. Going into, I said, we can't just let him be forgotten. It was late at night. And Grayson was not open then. You could walk up in the mornings. So I said, we just can't. Let's do a candlelight. Somebody goes to the store and buys candles. They were all colors. Mine was lime green. And we stood outside the gates. And Harold Lloyd was on the gates. And he let us come in. Just We made a little circle. And there was maybe, oh, at the most, 25, maybe 30. I don't think so. And... Uh, we just, everybody said what they wanted to say, and we sang a couple of gospel songs and uh, said a prayer, and we left. And you but didn't go up to the grave? No, you just absolutely. Just inside the gate? Just, just inside the gate. Okay. And um, that was the first candlelight. So it was really, essentially, your idea. And it was a, well, uh, it was a spur of the moment idea. Right. It wasn't a plan. But it was, no, it was very spur of the moment. It was, you know, and I, it's just simply... Somebody else, I think, said candlelight, but I said, we can't let him be forgotten. Yeah. And, um, I, I, and we can't. I agree. And that's why we will do this every year. And it's, the fans do it. And I was going to say, Graceland would have you believe that they're doing this. You know, they're, they're doing it now, but that's not how it started. Well, but Elvis. Elvis Country, Country is really doing it now. We right? pay for it. Right. You actually pay for this. Yes. We, do, we pay for the programs. We used, we used to pay for the candles. We used to be the ones that cleaned up the, the driveway and the street. After it was all said and done. Because the sun wasn't going to come up on Graceland looking tacky. That is incredible. So you still have that candle? Yes, I do. That is something else. So let me get this straight. Yesterday, last night, the candlelight vigil was Elvis Country. Yes. That sponsored that and took care of it. To a degree. To a degree. It, it had to be approved by the health department. Right. But Grayson very nicely allowed us to have some input. And that was... Um, so they've tried to take it over, let's just say. Well, no, that's not... Is that good. not a fair assessment? No, that's not. Okay. They... they it, 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 I don't think, just like everybody else, I don't think they knew what to do. 
Nobody knows what to do in this. Yeah. And I'm not talking about I mean, from a COVID standpoint. I'm talking about taking it over from a standpoint of Elvis Country. I'm, I know last year John spoke, and I believe you spoke last year. Mm -hmm. And um, so y'all are really who puts on this event. Is is that a fair assessment? Elvis, yes, Elvis Country puts it on by fans. Right. So it's not a Graceland event, even though it's at Graceland. Y'all are actually the ones that do the event. That's right. Okay. And we we worked wonderful with Graceland for many many years. Yes. So let's go back to the second one, which would have been 1980. Well, one of Elvis Country was formed by 12 ladies, and it just happened to be 12. And um, we had an executive committee. We all worked together. And my Elvis running mate was Louise Nelson. And she loved to do programs. <laughs> Elvis Country had a program for everything we did. <laughs> that's, that's her thing. Yes, it was her thing. She, she, in fact, we both had worked for a printing company when we met. And then we started seeing Elvis together. And, uh, um, but she knew more about printing. Oh, I was in the accounting department. And, um, so she loved to get the programs printed and all that, which is good. It makes good memories and it, it, you know. So we had a little program and then out came the ones we passed out the next year. And uh, of course that was before computers. You had to have it typeset and they're expensive, especially when you're giving them away free and there's a lot, thousands and thousands of them. But we've always been able to raise the money from the fans. And we used to pass out candles before Graceland started doing it. Well, most people brought their own. Mm -hmm. And it's there for a while. People were making their own candle holder and putting flowers and streamers or pictures of Elvis on it and all that. And that was very nice. And everybody had their special candle holder. Um, a lot of it has evolved, and um, Elvis countries, we've always worn our uniforms, and um, but and we go up last because that's what host and hostess always does. And the candlelight originally started at midnight, the night of the fifteenth. Really. Mm-hmm. So a lady mentioned to me yesterday that they uh, that was is part of it. She's in the Blue Moon of Kentucky mm -hmm. uh, fan club, and she said that there was times when y'all weren't done till ten o'clock in the morning. Literally, the buses started coming across as y'all were cleaning up and leaving. You were mm -hmm. finishing. Mm -hmm. Wow, ten hours. Oh yes, and we didn't stand it in tennis shoes either, and we didn't take shifts. We stood all night. Wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that um, that y'all raised money for let's let's go back a little bit. Y'all raised money for taxes for Graceland. Tell us about that. Yes. Well, when they were having before they opened, there was uh, well, I can tell you this: IRS landed the plane on a plane August seventeenth, nineteen seventy seven. Really? Mm-hmm. Because we were here and they announced it on the radio. So, he's, Elvis always paid his taxes. Mm-hmm. But they were running short, evidently. I don't know. I'm not privy to Graceland's accounting department. But uh, they were saying they were having trouble making taxes and keeping the upkeep. And Elvis Country raised money and donated it. To help them. To, to help to save the house. Save the us. house. That is incredible, and, Jordan. Yeah. I mean, we were... We're Elvis and Graceland all the way. So you've done it this whole time. You've not missed one. No. All the way from Texas. That is incredible. My first year was 1977. Amazing. Did you come to the funeral? Well, they didn't let me in, but I was standing cry out in the street. Yes. Yeah. Speaking my girlfriend, Louise Nelson, we got on a plane and here we came. Are these pictures that we have here, is this Louise? No, that's Janice Christos. So this is J Janice, another friend. And she was one of the first members of Elvis Country. Because she lives in Minnesota. That's so. And she never was at my house, and I was never at her house. But 
Y'all were Elvis friends. Boy, I, well, we were more than Elvis friends. <laughs> we, we were big buddies. Yeah. And uh, So we've got uh, pictures, friends, that I'll show you of the second vigil that we have uh, from her collection. You have photos from the first one that you said you may be able to share with us. Right. Um, so tell us more about how it evolved. What was it like by the time the house opened in, in what, 82? What, what was that like? Was there any conflicts at that time where they didn't? Because at some point you were able to go up to the grave. So tell us about when that, how that evolved. That was after the house opened. What that was is they had a tent convention across the street, about where the planes are now. And that was before the planes were even there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, in fact, corporate was in a trailer. Yeah. About where that that uh, awning is, the the where the picnic tables are, sort of to the right of the planes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, well, it would be. Yeah, I think so. And um, they were, there was a big tent set over there that they had the convention in. It was not Graceland. And I think it was had something to do with the Grey Line Tours, I think. And um, they were saying that you could walk up if you went to the J.D. Sumner's Gospel show. And but you had to pay to get in. And so, to the candlelight. And we were all going around saying, no, you don't have to pay to go to the candlelight. So we went through the house, and the tour guide very nicely said, are y'all coming to the candlelight tonight? And one of the ladies goes, we do the candlelight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so... By this time, you've got a whole group of Elvis Country hardcore fans, and they're telling you, no, you don't. So we, after we did our tour, we went back, and I went up to this gentleman, and I said, I need to speak to somebody in charge. And he said, well, I'm, I said, no, not the tickets, the whole thing. And I spoke to Ken Brixey, and he was a very nice gentleman. And he was from Memphis, and uh, he said, his exact words were, I am so glad that the fans are doing this. He said, Grey Line Tours told them they did it. I said, no, they've never done it. They've never been out here. And um, he said, great, y'all got it. So that night, we have all the people we've told, you know, most of the fans are all in front of the house. And after J.D.'s thing, they came over, the group that was in the tent. And uh, they came marching and everything, and we just swallowed them up. And it's been like that, fans, ever since. And back then, they were not blocking the road like they do now. When did that come about? Graceland got the road blocked. But before that, Mr. Tubbs, that owned Souvenirs of Ellis, he, when we were just outside in the street... He would call the police and get it to block the street for us. Really? So they would just block it with cars? Yes. Temporarily? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the guy that made uh, all of the Elvis tour jackets. He would do those kinds of things. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that, um, that is interesting uh, that they were trying to make it where you had to pay more or less but that wasn't Grayson. go up. That, that wasn't Grayson, though. That was Grayline saying that. Grayline, or uh -huh. whoever was running that tent. Aha. Uh -huh. So they were trying to kind of make it a twofer type thing to, uh, to yes. get people to mm -hmm. attend the concert. Boy, a lot of that kind of stuff has gone on over the years, hasn't it? I mean, there's been times we just had to fight for it. Yeah. And that's and, a shame that you had to do those kinds of things well, to keep but, it going. It's America. <laughs> but it's Elvis. So y'all right. fought for it. So we fought. He That's took right. care of business. That's right. right. We're TCBing. That's right. Always and forever. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. So um, how many members, you said that it started growing. Like by the time that this went on, you said that there was a group. How big was your group at that point that you were bringing up on the buses? 
Oh, we the bus was full. It was just one bus. Just single bus, okay. Really neat. That's all you so want. That'd be 50 people, 60 people, right. something like that. And uh, how big is it now? How big is Elvis Country? Well, we're on Facebook. We don't do a newsletter anymore. Okay. Because with Facebook and the Internet, everybody knows. Right. Mm -hmm. But we used to do... We used to do over 5,000 newsletters wow. every other month. Well, I know John Daly is part of Elvis Country. Yes, he is. And um, the guy that, uh, uh, him and his wife, I actually, they're in one of my videos from the other day. Um, I was trying to think of their name. They are from uh, Wisconsin. And he was one of the torchbearers, uh, John God. Jeffers. Mm -hmm. And John actually made the torch holders that yes, they used this year. this year. And uh, he's an engineer by trade. He's the yes. one that lost his job at Harley Davidson on his first trip to Graceland <laughs> on the same day that he left to come to Graceland. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to put this in for John, and I may put it in another video too. One of Elvis Country's people actually created the holder for the torch for this year. Yes. Because of COVID, they wanted the torch to be where there was no one within it. Well, it had to so be, yeah. one of your members, John Jeffords, right. actually created it and brought it up here. Now, Graceland actually created one too, but they liked his better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was an, an honor for one of your people. You got smart people in your group. You know, they're still contributing to yes. this to this thing today. Yes. We, Even in an engineering standpoint. Yes, I mean yeah. we we have accountants, CPAs. I mean, uh, police officers, everything, all aspects. It, it's a very eclectic Elvis fan group. All pulling in the same direction. We're all going the same direction. That's what I love about it. And y'all have the whole time been doing this event. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't understand when John was up there last year. Uh, doing his speech with Elvis Country, I honestly didn't. I didn't understand what it was. I now I'm glad that I'm getting an understanding of mm -hmm. what Elvis Country is and where it's based on and how y'all came to be part of the candlelight or you actually created the candlelight. And uh, that, I think that's an incredible story. And John told me he said, "Man, you're gonna want to talk to her when she comes here." Now she's gonna say she didn't have anything to say, well. but. I believe that this is a this is a great story. This is an important story, so oh, the fans understand why the candlelight is there. That's not something that's happening out of goodness of of, of any corporate entity's heart. This is something that's done by the fans. Well, but for they, they allowed us right up. But what I'm saying is, they, they are not they are, they didn't create this. This is something created by the fans. Well, it's by the fans for the fans for Ellis. That's right. And that's the way it should be. I agree. Yeah. That's the way it really should be. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're his friends. Yeah. They're his family. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.